Yes, I live among the indigenous liberal population of Brooklyn, New York, and uh, they, they really think that there's nothing west of the Hudson River, that uh, there's New York City, which is the United States of America, and then uh, to the west of the Hudson River is the wilderness, the great wilderness, untamed, if you will. So I, I'm not quite sure they really respect the values and the traditions and, and the way, you know, the, the, you know, our patriotic way. Uh, it's it's almost a foreign concept to New York, and in some ways, New York City is is really a bastion of, of socialism. I mean, I think there's a, a fair argument can be made that it is in fact a socialist city. I, I you know, I, you know, I get it. I, I mean, you know, life. You know, people live in, and die in the Eastern Time Zone. You know, that's just part of the way it is. And I, I actually understood that why that was an issue when I worked out in California, which is a three-hour time difference. So we're in our own world out on that side of the coast. You know, I, I think there is a disconnect. I think many of the uh, the journalists that work in New York uh, are, are from New York or from the Northeast. They've gone to the Ivy League schools, and God bless them, you know, some of the smartest people uh, I know have gone to Ivy League schools, and they just don't have a lick of common sense. So, you know, it's an issue, and, and I think that we need, if we really want to be reflective of the, of the country, I think we need diversity in the, in the journalism pool as well as, you know, other areas of life. People who cling to their guns and religion are bitter Americans. That's, that's what he said. And, and I got to thinking about that. I'm like, well, wait a second. I, I'm a gun-toting, chicken-eating son of a Baptist. I don't think I'm all that bitter. And uh, most of my family, they, they own guns. They, they eat fried chicken. They go to church. Sometimes they do, do it all at one time. And they don't seem to be all that bitter. So, uh, you know, I started looking at these values and these traditions, th these things that, that supposedly make us bitter. Uh, the things that, uh, that we supposedly cling to. And at the end of the day, I determined that the reason we're clinging to our, our guns and our religion is, is because we're afraid the government's going to take them away from us. So it, there, there are stereotypes. Look, Southerners have stereotypes of New Yorkers. So, you know, it, it, you, the, the point I try to make in my book, though, is that um, you can't be hypocritical. If, if you're allowed to make fun of one people group, you have to be able to make fun of uh, the other people group. You know, you can't be selective, you know, in your, and, and quite frankly, selective in your righteous indignation. You know, you're marching in the streets for one cause, but not for the other. Makes no sense at all. But, uh, you know, one of the great things about Fox is you walk into the building and you see people from all over the country. I mean, it really, that's one of the neat things. And, you know, it's just an observation. You know, you hear a good Southern accent or you hear an accent from, uh, you know, from, from the Midwest or Wisconsin or wherever. So uh, that's what I like about Fox. As a matter of fact, if you go to my office, it's, it's been dubbed the Southern Embassy because I have like a crack. I actually ordered a Cracker Barrel rocking chair for my office. Unequivocally, no. Uh, those are very big boots that will never be filled, in, in my opinion, by anyone, much less me. Uh, um, you know, I'm just very happy to, to be able to, to write and to be able to talk on the radio and, and paint pictures with words. Uh, you know, I love radio. Everybody says, what do you want to do now? You know, now, what do you want to do now? It's like, do you want to do TV? And I'm very happy doing radio. I, I think it's a great medium. I think it's the only medium that is personal, that you make that personal contact with somebody, you know, that, you, that you're talking right to them and, and, they're, and they're listening. So, yeah, Paul Harvey is one of a kind, and I don't think anyone else will ever be able to replace him. Well, it's all those bitter clingers love it. Uh, you know, they, they, they really appreciate, you know, the, the stories, and they appreciate knowing that they're not alone. You know, that, that, yeah, there is something wrong with the country. You know, you're not just, you're not just, you're not alone in, in how you think. The liberals don't like it so much, and I don't know why. I think it'd be a perfect stocking stuffer in the East Room of the White House. But what are you going to do? Uh, I will say this, though. One of, the, one of the best compliments came from a snotty little um, liberal reviewer, and they just ripped the book to shreds. And uh, they, they said, in, in this one line, they said, they said, there aren't a lot of big words in this book. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> That's the point. It's <laughs> but um, but it's, it's going great. And it's just been an honor and a blessing to be able to write the book. Of course, um, B&H Publishing has just an, done an amazing job. And now we're on this book tour going across the country, meeting wonderful people and, uh, and signing their books.